You are unmuted. Okay, I hope you didn't say anything before. It... <laughs> oh, of course, we just <laughs> told all the world secrets. Okay. I'm going to call this meeting to order on January 20th at 9.10. And would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. Um, do we have any additions to the agenda? Not that I'm aware of, ma'am. And non public we have today? Yes. Um, as you go along, I'll confirm what's okay. what needs to happen. Okay. Uh, next would be the approval of the minutes from January 13th. People have copies of those. Say again. Minutes from last week. Five. Yes. Should be right in the packet. Okay. Have you had a chance to lose them? Yeah, I did, uh, <laughs> no, I did on, uh, if they're the same ones that were emailed. Yes, they are. Yeah. Do you have any? No, madam. No, no questions. No questions? Comments. No comments? No comments. No comments? Okay. I'll wait a motion to accept the minutes of January 13th. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of the January 13th, 2020 commissioner's meeting. I'll, I'll second that motion. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Melissa, do you have a copy for us to sign? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Questions. Oh, we do. Of course we do. Uh, James here, Tommy Daly's son. I caught a little bit of last week's meeting, and I was just kind of wondering, uh, now we've had, I guess, an additional week to think about it, what are kind of the main takeaways from the audit, either in the commissioner's opinion or the or Ferguson's opinion? Um, we will be discussing that later on, um, Damon, um, but if Fergus would like to comment, that's fine. Uh, I'll defer to the commissioners on that, and perhaps it might make sense to chat afterwards, but I'll have to Right, because we have to approve it. And then, like, one thing, um, I think we heard last week, and correct me if I'm wrong, something about the bank statements for 2019 and 2020 haven't been reconciled, and it just, it made me curious as to how we can have an audit if we, if we don't even, if we don't have balanced books. Um, the update, the... 2019s have been completely completed. Okay. And 2020s are being started. So that's where we're at with that. Um, yeah. Fergus, do you have anything to add? No, but I think we'll be talking about it a little bit uh, as part of the meeting, but that's correct. And then in a perfect world, would 2020 be done by now, or what, what uh, it would be done monthly? Is that correct? That is our goal for the future, yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Cool. Any public input? And the manifest for January 12th, 113,299,096 cents. And Will, are you with us? Our department report. No, I don't see him yet, Madam Chair. They're not used to us being so. <laughs> and Chris is not here. So, okay, Fergus, I guess we'll go right to you. All right. A little bit of a packet for each of you. And as usual, I'll sort of try to hit the highlights. Um, 
All right, so on the 2019 audit, so we were missing a letter from an attorney. We tracked that down and got it to Melanson. All other inquiries from Melanson have been addressed. The only outstanding item is that representation letter, which I know is on your agenda for today. Uh, when I asked Melanson about their availability for a presentation uh, before you and the delegation, uh, their response was they would like to take a pass. Um, so uh, you may want to discuss that as to whether you're going to accept that as an adequate response or not. Say that again. Their response was that they would like to take a pass. A pass on? Making a presentation. Did they say why? Uh, I believe that it would be a reflection of the state of our relationship. But that is part of their duties, is it not? I'm not sure if it's actually in the contract, but it's a normal procedure for the last several years that they've been our auditors. I would think so. Now, the delegation, of course, is scheduled to meet next Monday. Uh, we don't have the finalized version of the audit, so it sort of is a moot point for that. Yeah. And I do not believe the delegation has formally scheduled their subsequent meetings. Uh, perhaps Melissa could shed some light on that. They so have They have not. So in that sense, we don't really have dates anyway. Okay. Uh, so an option would be to wait till some other dates and uh, resubmit the request. Okay, so that's that. Um, the ACA spreadsheet, this is, uh, Ruby is doing uh, strong work on this on behalf of all of us, saving, I will say, the county significant thousands of dollars because it's something that we're doing in-house. So that is uh, progressing. Uh, the 2020 audit, I did not kick that off in the last week, but it is um, top of the agenda for this next week. And an update on the bank reconciliation process. So uh, Kathy Warren and I did meet last Friday to uh, get a clear understanding of exactly where we are, confirming that yes, all of 2019 was in fact done in terms of the reconciliations. Uh, and Laura is helping organize the 2020 material now. So we're going to continue to drive that process, but that's where things are. Did, did you have discussions with them about the timing of completing that the, two, the 2020 reconciliations? I, uh, I really just want to try and do as much as I can to assure you that it's a top priority and we're moving it forward. I can't give you a specific time frame, but I'll be giving you an up, a weekly update uh, on that progress with the full understanding that this is a high priority item. When we say the reconciliations are done for 2019, what does that mean? Uh, it means that they w were completed. I have spreadsheets to back that up. This was part of material that was submitted to Melanson as part of their audit. Um, and uh, it, it appears to have been done correctly and, and accurately. And Chair, may I ask a follow-up? Yes. Um, does that mean all of the uh, outstanding checks were balanced and that payroll and the transfers through the general account were accounted for? It means that our starting figures for January 1st, 2020 should be accurate to reflect whatever was reflected in the bank statements for all of 2019. I don't have concerns that there was a working problem there. And given that we've had draft materials for the audit, you know, nothing was flagged there that suggested there was a significant issue or anything like that. Madam Chair, the Treasurer has a question. He's on remote. Okay. Yes, Joe. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first thing is, um, if I may, Fergus, I did not get a copy of the document you just passed to the commissioners. Uh, Mr. Treasurer, I'm sorry, I've uh, got hard copies here. I'll make sure you get electronic copies uh, shortly. Okay, please do. Second thing, um, I checked this morning, and the last message I got was that Laura had just received 
the final bank statements for 2019 to work on them. So um, I'm not sure what you mean when you say it's all reconciled and you have a correct balance. Um, does that mean that the finance office has done this balancing now? Uh, I think that there was not very good communication between different members of the finance office previously, and that's why we met on Friday uh, to get a clear understanding of exactly where things were left. So the answer to the question is, are they done or not? Yes, 2019 is done. Okay, so you get some documentation to support that. I'd like copies of that, please. Sure, I did receive that yesterday. Okay. I'll make sure you get a copy Moving of it. forward, I did uh, get the paperwork to get Laura uh, to be able to get copies of the bank statements directly from the bank. Unfortunately, I'm not there with it today, so I'll be there at some point, and she can sign in. We'll have that set up, so I'll take care of that problem. Kim, do you have a question? Thank you, Madam Chair. So I just want to clarify, because last week we spoke with the person performing the task of reconciliation and she did not believe that 2019 had been fully completed so was that completed between then and now because she's the one that's actually doing it and she her comment to us was it wasn't complete uh, we were not certain exactly what the status was on Wednesday not all staff were here on Wednesday not all staff were here on Thursday when all staff were here on Friday the three of us met in person to figure out exactly where things were. And if I may, I, I, I spoke with um, that particular person this morning and she assured me that 19 was done okay. completely. So. Um, the other thing that might be of some, some use um, when we get some reorganization downstairs, um, there's a possibility Laura has offered to come in on a, a couple of Saturdays. Um, to speed up the process so we can get the 20s done. So that might be something that we might want to look into. If we think that would help. So. Sure. We're still, I mean, yep. every day making progress in exactly defining where things are yep. and uh, we're, we're advancing in this area. So I, I can't tell you exactly how long it's going to take yet. But hopefully we'll be done at least by June. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I'd like to be able to start doing them monthly as we should be Oh, no question. We, we, have, done, we, so. have yeah. we have to. Okay. Madam Chair, the Treasurer has his hand raised again. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Joe. Thank you, Madam Chair. Another question to Fergus. Fergus, if this was all done, how come I wasn't notified of it? Um, it would seem to me that the Treasurer should be notified that this was done and completed. Uh, you're absolutely right. It's clear to me that there's been a lot of uh, poor communication around this topic for quite some time. Uh, I only learned these things in the last couple of days. Um, okay. So you're right. I could have, should have uh, made an extra call to you to, to update you on that. Uh, we are having that update now. Um, and this is only the second working day since we had the meeting. So... Um, you know, it's not like a, a long time has elapsed where I've known this and, and you didn't. Okay, well, please be advised that I need to be kept in the loop on all of these transactions. So make sure that whoever in your department is doing this stuff, that they copy me on it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Continue, Curtis. Okay. I'm oh, sorry, no, I'm going to ask one more question. Sure. Uh, Super Colin, for next week, can we know, I'd like to know weekly what month we're at. So I'm going to assume right now that we're at January of 2020. So next week when you come in, I'd like to know what month we're at when you present on Wednesday and approximately how long it takes to reconcile one month. Okay. Um, and this is why I give you a weekly written report. So this is certainly going to be a topic. You know, I understand, but I would like those two specific things. You can address them in your weekly report, or you can come in with the answers. It doesn't really matter to me how that occurs, but I would like the specific answers to those questions, where, which are specifically what month we are currently at and how long it takes to reconcile one month. Sure. Okay. All right, 
second item in your packet um, is updated revenue figures for 2020. You may recall when I gave you a copy of this a couple weeks ago, it was updated through November, but not through December because it does take us a little while to get some of that revenue. Uh, we do believe that all revenue from 2020 is now accounted for and uh, reflected in the avenue. So that is the updated spreadsheet. It's a three-pager um, and shows you where you're at. So this was only finished yesterday, so you haven't had a preview of it. You may want to give it a closer look over the next week, um, but I did want to let you know that that is there. We have not yet updated the spending side because we're still, of course, uh, we've got another week of checks that could be potentially applied to 2020. So. Yeah, we'll need a week to look at this and go over it next yep. next meeting. Okay. Great, thank you. Sorry to interrupt, Madam Chair. Um, I have received a request from the um, chair of the Mountain View Subcommittee for that report as soon as possible and ahead of the delegation meeting on Monday. But you prefer to hold the week, or can we send it as a draft, understanding that there may be adjustments? I, I, Fergus? I would like to do that, yeah. Yep, you can do that. Send Thank it you. as a draft. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, any reason to, uh, should that only go to that individual, or is it okay to release to the rest of the delegation? The request was for the full delegation to have it, if that's. As long as I understand it, it is a draft. I'll make that clear in my okay. correspondence. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, item number six, uh, an update on the, the potential bond issue. Um, you had some material from last week, which I hope you had a chance to review. Last week, Commissioner Pletch suggested I contact the New Hampshire Municipal Bond Back. I did. Uh, I typed up some of the notes from that conversation, which is also in that packet, which you have. Um, just hitting some of the highlights of that. Um, the January bond sale, which they just completed a week or two ago, rates on the 10-year bond was 0.81. That is not a typo. Bond rate on the 20-year was 1.58. Now, you may recall that the initial spreadsheet I put together uh, used 2% as the rate in order to be conservative, and I think we should still think in terms of being conservative, and of course there is interest rate risk but there is potential that the rate could be yet lower. Um, also, they let me know they had 12 bids on their January bond issue. Okay, so I've mentioned that this does go out to bid, um, regardless of the process. Um, so those were the rates that were given. Uh, through them, the next bond issue is in July. Applications are due April 30. Okay, this is also consistent with the other path that we could take. Um, and the long, I did not know this, the longest bond available is uh, 29 years and one month. They can't go longer than 30, and so that is the longest period. Um, let's see, uh, question about how many, oh, uh, an advantage of going through the bond bank, uh, we do not need to have a bond rating from one of the credit agencies, okay? Uh, so that is a certain advantage. Um, how many years of audits are needed? The answer is three most recent, which would be 2017 through, through 2019. So in other words, we have all, once we get our finalized 2019 audit, which we certainly will before the application deadline, uh, we should have everything we would need. Um, so, but there are advantages to a direct issue. One of them is that the bank can quote us a rate today that we can count on today, whereas the bond bank won't know what the rate is until July. Um, so it's certainly, and I've been in touch with Bond Council to update them on that conversation as well. So it is, uh, you know, the path, the two paths that you could potentially take going with the direct issue probably to a bank, uh, which would again be up to bid, and going through the New Hampshire Municipal Bond Bank, both available to us. Um, so, uh, oh, and there also I believe the question came up last week um, whether we could merge the two potential bond packages into one? The answer is yes, we could, and yes, we would save fees. I checked with our financial advisor on this. Um, that being said, the bond issue involving the, the nursing home is really a nine- or ten-year time horizon. The bond for 
potentially for the registry is probably a longer time horizon. They're really two different purposes. One is effectively a refinance, the other is a new project. Um, I think it's worth exploring, um, but personally I see them as two separate items. And uh, you know, in this rate environment, uh, a second set of fees of $10,000 or something like that, um, it may not make sense to merge them if we have to also merge the time horizon on them. So just something to think about as you continue to, to consider this whole possibility. Um, if you are ready to, uh, to, to give it a tentative green light, uh, which I would ask for today, what I'd like to do is be able to share that bond proposal with the delegation so it can be part of their discussion on Monday. That doesn't mean they're making any decisions on it or scheduling a public hearing. It just means we continue to have that discussion among the broad group of people who need to sign on to it if we're going to do it. Keeping in mind, we've got plenty of time, but the clock is ticking. We have you know two to three months to line this whole thing up. Uh, Fergus, when you say share the bond proposal, what, what do you mean? What are you talking That's about? That's the information I gave you last week. The potential, um, you know, the potential amortization table, uh, what the potential savings would be compared to our existing bond, um, all that information. Could you uh, refresh my memory on the outstanding amount that we're looking at refinancing? Uh, roughly $12 million, I believe, was the figure. Might have been 11 and a half or something like and that. And then we would add the $5 million additional, approximately $5 million for the registry project, either in the same bond issue or in a separate one. Correct. And uh, I, I think it would make sense myself that we include the information regarding the potential for using the bond bank, the municipal bond bank, uh, because these rates look pretty good, and uh, I think the process really is designed for what we're trying to do as a municipal, as a municipal government organization. So when we talk to the delegation about this, when it's presented to the delegation, I think we should have the complete story, including information regarding using the municipal bond bank. I agree. Um, it's worth noting that when the original bond was issued for the nursing home, it was a direct issue with the bank, U.S. Bank as it happens, um, and not done through the municipal bond bank, but I think we should be exploring both options for sure. Do we have any idea why that was, why it wasn't done through the municipal bond bank at the time? I do not. Um, it also included in that packet a chart of uh, municipal bond rates going back 21 years, um, which underscores the point that these are historic low rates, uh, which I think we all knew. That's the one. Uh, and that's based on the closest issue to January of each year. So sometimes it was January, sometimes it was December, sometimes it was late as June. So it's not quite apples with apples, but it gives you pretty clear sense that these are incredible rates. Another question if I could. Uh, does the timing fit with what you've outlined here in this memo? The yes. April, we, we'd make the application by April. We could do that. Yes, we could. Yep. I think that's a little accelerated compared to what you presented last week. Well, that's for the application. You're correct. The, the bond issue itself, if we... Um, the first proposal would be to put something out. Uh, well, both of them have a July bond sale time frame. And remember, we have an August 1st redemption date. That does not move. And we only get that shot twice a year, Okay, February 1st and August 1st. Mm -hmm. So we have to have everything teed up, ready to go, money in the bank uh, by that date. We could do it, and we would eventually... We, effectively have not the same as a tax anticipation note, but we would we'd be carrying the interest for probably something of up to 30 days on double the amount. With regard to the August 1st redemption date, is there any obligation for prior notice? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. Um, 
I would have to consult with our bond council and financial advisor on that. I believe it's not a secret to them, right? It's, no, it's available. If there's a, a written notice obligation, we should be aware of that and make sure we meet that obligation. Joe? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, question to um, CFO Fergus. I, I may have misinterpreted uh, what you were saying. Was there a discussion about doing two separate issues, or are we going to combine it into uh, one issue, um, which includes the registry of deeds? Well, I think that's, that's a policy decision and a choice for the commission and the delegation to make. It's an option to combine the two or to keep them as separate issues. Uh, given that they have different time horizons, one is effectively a refinancing and the other is a new project <coughs> with a different time horizon, my inclination is to keep them as separate items, uh, but that's a policy decision for the elected officials to make. Joe? Madam Chair? Yes. Follow up? So um, I'm a big believer in not spending any more than we have to. I'm not sure exactly why we want to separate them. I would prefer to keep them both together. Uh, second thing is I agree with Commissioner Platt. Uh, we should be doing this through the New Hampshire Bond Bank. Um, I've done work with them before, and they do an excellent job. So I would encourage anybody involved with this to work with the New Hampshire Municipal Bond Bank on this project. Okay. I mean, effectively, I'd want them both competing for the rates, right? Um, consistent with the treasurer's point that we don't want to pay any more than we want than we need to. But it may be one of them may have an advantage over the other, and that's what we should do. Um, so what I'm asking for today, I guess, is uh, sort of your, your green light to advance the conversation. No decisions, except that you know we should advance this to the delegation to bring them uh, into the loop on the consideration uh, so they have a chance to start mulling it with their meeting next week. Um, you know, I do think this is likely to be something that everyone's going to want to do, at least with respect to the nursing home. And so I want to make sure we keep that process rolling forward. Madam Chair, I'm curious, what role does the delegation play in making the decision in doing this? I think it's our decision to push it to the delegation, and since they have to make the appropriation. And as part of the material that was provided last week, it does show yep. the timeline and the steps that are needed. You both need to sign off on this process. Yep. Um, so it's not something that one body or the other can, can accomplish. Yeah, can't do it by ourselves, right? Yep. Madam Chair, may I make a comment? Yes. I, d I don't have a, a thought on the bonds particularly, other than I think it's positive to advance it to the delegation. But I would be looking to have our books in order by April 30th. I do not want to file an application with a financial agency without our reconciliations up to date. So if we're filing an application, it would be my expectation that our reconciliations are done prior to this April 30th deadline to file for it. And I just want to put that out there so it's not a shock in April when we're having the conversation. Uh, Madam Back Chair, yes? uh, I, I think we need to push for uh, a much earlier date on the reconciliations. So uh, my understanding, and this is you know, based on the conversation with the treasurer last week, that it doesn't take all that long to do a, a reconciliation. And, and I think, uh, if I may, I think we need to sit down at some point soon and, and figure out what the, the holdup in the process has been. Um. Um, we're doing that. Okay. Right now, I want to get back on. We're, okay. we're, that we're going into a different subject. We're, I know. I'm we're, sorry. That's okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. So the question is now: Do we want to pass this on to the to the delegation on Monday? And I, I see no problem with that. I don't know if we even have to take a vote on that. Do you have a problem with? No, I don't no. either. I think we should. I, I agree with that, and with the proviso that we. We do disclose the information on the right. municipal bond bank. Yep. Yeah. All, all of the material regarding the bond placement that I provided to you last week and this week, I'll put in okay. one packet and okay. send to the delegation. Also, okay. uh, if I may, 
going forward, I think we need the delegation's involvement. Uh, we're looking at a short, pretty short fuse here to make this application by April 30th. So we need the delegation's buy-in pretty quickly. And I don't know if they'd want to appoint you know, a subcommittee to work on this, or, do, uh, or are they going to do the whole thing as you know, a complete delegation? But uh, I'm feeling a need to keep them involved and get their buy-in pretty quickly on this. So, so first, if we're going to go forward, for scheduling purposes, how long will it take to draft the application? It's not very complicated. I got to say, it was pretty simple. I, I looked at the material yesterday. We have most of it. With the, you know, we will be receiving the final 2019 audit soon. Um, we've got lots of debt capacity. Um, we've got plenty of time as long as we keep the ball rolling to get this accomplished by then in either route. I'm just thinking when we send it to the delegation, we should send it with a, this is when we'd like to receive it back deadline so that we can know how much time we need to then fill out the application and get it submitted. Because this isn't something we can be late with. They have so. to do a duly noticed public hearing. You do not have to do a public hearing. Um, so there are there's there is a calendar that needs to be followed. Um, again, all that is in the background material. Right, but I think what everybody would find helpful, what I'm saying, is a timeline. So we know this is the time the delegation needs to have had that public hearing, all of that. This is the time frame with which the commissioners need to get it back so that it can be drafted and submitted and have a date of April 20th for submission so that we're not up against... That's going to happen, Commissioner, because it's part of the budget process, and that needs to be wrapped up by March 31st. So you're, we're going to be, that will be completed in time for a, an April 30th application deadline. I'm not concerned about that at all. Madam Chair, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Just one more comment. I, I want to echo what our Treasurer has said about uh, pursuing a single issue. I, I, I don't think we should take that off the table at all. Uh, I, I think it makes sense. Also, uh, doing the project, you know, funding the project for the registry is extremely important. It's, it's, a, it's a critical obligation of county government to maintain that registry. And the delegation has removed the, the funds that, that the commission put in the budget for this year, uh, the past commission. Those funds have been removed. It was $600,000, and the delegation removed that. There was a discussion when they did it about the potential for financing that project in its entirety with a bond issue this year. And I, 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 I can't emphasize, I can't overly emphasize how important that is. Uh, this is the time to do it. We've, we've got to make that happen because those deeds are critically important to be maintained. So, I, don't, um, I, don't, I don't think anybody disagrees with you. Okay, good. Um, Madam Chair? Yes. We have we have delegation packets going out in the mail today, and I'd like to request that those bond document your packet for today be included in those. It's easier for the members to have written materials when they're in the meeting on Zoom. If you can get it done. Yeah. Thank you. you. Yep. So this, these, these two documents would be included? Yes, please. Okay. If those could be given to the administrative assistant downstairs, okay. there are 15 copies that she's helping stuff those on board today. So. Thank you. Thank you. Joe, you have any other comments before we continue? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, the, only, the only question I heard, I heard uh, um, CFO Fergus say that we have plenty of debt capacity. So I, I'd kind of like to hear what that means. I mean, uh, it's one thing to have plenty of debt capacity. It's another thing to actually have to pay the bills. So um, I'm not sure where that's coming from. So could you elaborate on that, please? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, when the bond issue for the nursing home was issued originally at $23.5 million, we also were still paying off a bond on the jail, and we had a third bond issue out for, I can't remember what it was. It was not a, a, a large thing. The only current debt that we have is the bond issue on the nursing home, which again is 
somewhere in the neighborhood of 11 or 12 million dollars in balance. Uh, since then, of course, the taxable base of the county has grown. I believe our debt capacity is something like 3% of the uh, tax base of the county. I mean, I'm not suggesting that we go and, you know, build a $250 million structure, but I think we've got capacity to do that legally if, uh, if we so chose to do so. What I'm saying is I don't think there's going to be any hiccups or barriers to us issuing this. We're going to pass on all the different tests um, of whether we can take this on. And remember that the nursing home, all we're doing is refinancing an existing obligation and saving some $850,000 to do it. Um, so you know, even if the group were to decide to move ahead with the registry project, you know, we're, we're not going to run into any kind of debt limits um, the way a school district might say if they're building a new high school, you know, where they have to be concerned about that. Okay, I, I just want to be sure that, um, you know, it makes perfect sense to me, like I've said before, to redo this bond and include the nursing home in one fell swoop. Um, but I just want to be sure, because we've got to be responsible for the taxpayers, too, that we're not incurring additional um, um, debt that we don't already have. And this is debt that we, for the most part, we already have, and items that need to be taken care of, such as the registry. I, I equate back to the generator issue when I found out we had a World War II generator that we didn't have any surplus set aside for. It cost the county something like $8,500 a month for almost a year until we got our new generator built. So I, I'm very uh, cognizant of those issues. I just want to be careful we don't get caught in something like that again. Thank you. Okay, Fergus, next. Uh, thank you. The next is really just an update on the uh, conference, and I'm sorry, I've got a typo in my notes where it says 2010, it's of course the 2021 uh, Association of Com Counties Conference, so reminder, uh, this is scheduled for November of this year, is expected to be in person, and we are the host county, it is scheduled to take place at the Grand Hotel in North Conway, some 400 people involved. Uh, since we last met, I had a conversation with the um, administrator in Sullivan County. They hosted a couple of years ago and organized the event in-house, if you will. Yeah. And I also spoke with Kate Horgan from the Association of Counties. They organized, uh, on behalf of the counties, the most recent conference, which was 2019. The 2021, obviously, was canceled due to the pandemic. Um, there is a lot to do this. There are two paths, right? We can organize it in-house, or we can basically, the counties can decide to outsource it to uh, the, the association management company. Um, organizing a 400-person conference that is an $80,000 proposition um, would effectively require most, if not all, of a dedicated staffer for the next 10 months. Um, you know, organizing the panels, figuring out the topics, um, all the logistics, coordinating with the caterers, um, meals, you know, for 10 different meals, uh, a, you know, awards banquet for some 400 people. Um, alternatively, uh, we can ask the association to pick it up, which is what happened two years ago. Um, I think it's pretty clear that my views on this, I do not think that we have the bandwidth or the staff capacity to organize this ourselves or even the expertise in terms of the subject matter. Um, and my recommendation is that we uh, ask for a proposal from the counties. My understanding is that the other counties will be receptive to that and will uh, will we'll, we'll fund it. Um, there are some requirements, and we would probably, as a county, want to host uh, some kind of welcoming reception. I note that this is happening in the hometown of at least one of our commissioners. And um, in addition, we probably want some gifts and such that reflect the county. This is an opportunity for us to show off the county. Uh, in, in, in a lot of ways. And they will ask for certain volunteer support, things like you know, the registration tables and things like that. So even if we outsource it, we will have some responsibilities uh, towards this. So you don't, again, I'm not, I don't think you need to make a decision today, but I want to make sure all of this is on your radar and uh, we should probably go in one direction or the other pretty soon. So um, what's the cost for outsourcing it? Um, just what I'm we would get a proposal from them, but the Association of Counties would end up paying that, which would be part of our dues. Uh, so it wouldn't necessarily be anything more out of pocket for us. Um, 
I'm not, I, I'm, I'll probably talk to Kate myself, and um, I don't know. I think that, I mean, this is my line of work. This, this, this hotel was where I, one of my jobs as a food and beverage director. Um, so I'm very, and I know the staff there, um, but I don't know if I want to take that all on, personally. <laughs> but um, okay, we'll talk about it. Okay, so I will consider my job yep. on this, which is just uh, oh no no no, which is just putting forward uh, yep. accomplished for today. Uh, the okay. last note I just wanted to note: we do have a training session scheduled with the Avenue as we try to push forward with the implementation implementation of the purchase order and accounts payable modules that is scheduled for February 11th. So that process is moving forward. And that completes what I had to present to you. So with, um, if I may, with the uh, training, is that going to be uh, individual or is it going to be in here as a group? What's, how is that going to be conducted? Uh, it will probably be for a small number of us. Okay. Um, not necessarily a large number. The idea is to train the trainer. Um, so I would certainly be part of that. Of uh, other parts of the staff members in, in the finance department probably would. Um, I'll get more information okay. about it as we get a little bit closer to it. Okay. I just wanted to let you know that is moving yeah, forward. Sure, sure. Oh, Joe, yes? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Curtis, who's going to be the trainer? Uh, it'll be staff from Avenue. I don't know exactly whom. Do we have an idea? I don't really know. Okay. I would assume that Avenue have have their people that do all the training. I would. I'll get some more information. For now, we just have it scheduled. Um, so I will be learning more about that as we get closer to the date. And yes. Mm -hmm. I would just ask that you let the treasurer know when that's scheduled for, so that if he chooses to attend, he can, so that, that we're not having further issues. If he wants um, the ability to do that, he should have it. That's my personal feeling. I'm sure you'll let us know, right? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Any uh, further questions for Curtis? No. Uh, I just wanted to follow up on uh, the question of the the presentation from the Yeah, you do have to. Okay. I don't know if we want to do that now or. Okay. We do have to vote on that. Oh, not the presentation, but we do have to get the, uh, the letter signed today. Yeah, I, I'm, I understand. And, but the presentation, I, 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 is that optional on their part? Can they just say, well, oh, we prefer to, not to do it? I don't know if it's in their contract or not. I'll have to look that up. I don't have it right here, but I have it downstairs. Do you know? I don't know. do not believe it specifies that. Uh, of course, we do have an ongoing financial relationship with them, which is to say they have not been paid for work that has not been completed. Um, if we get some, my suggestion is that we get some additional dates from the delegation as to when they meet, and we make uh, the request that we get a presentation as part of yeah. this. Um, perhaps reminding them that uh, we continue to have, uh, we're holding money in reserve, for example. Perfect. Yeah. Could we uh, get access to that contract and check the obligations? Yeah, I have it downstairs. Okay, and because I think we should get the delegation to respond to this on Monday, if we could, and you know, give us some dates. Just for you know, future information, I believe all our contracts, any contract that you want to see is downstairs in, in um, a, a binder in okay. our office. Oh, good. So that you helps. can peruse at any time. And I believe we're starting discussions with the new audit company. We should make sure it's yep. in there. It shouldn't be optional under the next ones. Um, it, it must be done. Okay, any further questions? Fergus. Okay. Will. Come on up. I'm sorry, you weren't here, so we skipped ahead. Sorry, I wasn't sure what the order was. Yep, that's okay. I want to say good morning and welcome to the new commissioners. Um, do you have the little notes that? Yes, they do. Did you okay. okay, Madam 
important things as uh, Fergus did over there from the sounds of what you guys have going on but um, we've had a obviously a couple of big storms in December and then it's been pretty quiet um, lately which has been nice for us um, but we've still been trying to keep up on salting and for these light little storms and keep the slips and falls down as best we can contributing to that um, we've got a lot of maintenance and cleaning taking place on equipment that's common this time of the year when we actually have time to to get in the shop and and do some things that uh, you know are kind of like yearly things um, so we're trying to stay on top of those kinds of things keeping busy with that um, been fixing and replacing parts on certain uh, equipment um, we've got a snow blower that we're working on right now um, the example I had was uh, the spreader our salt spreader in the truck um, the electronics went out on it um, so we had to replace that um, so just things like that that are kind of normal, you know, when you're, as you're using equipment pop up. Um, just trying to stay on top of those and, and keep prepared. Um, we've had, we had a salt delivery here about a week ago and some ice melt deliveries. Um, we're doing pretty good on salt, really, to, to be honest at this point. I mean, I consider February 1st kind of halfway through the season, so we're not quite there yet. But as, as of going on right now, this is our first... Um, uh, purchase that we had to do so what we had left in the barn from last year has, has gotten us up through now uh, which has been good and the uh, ice melt um, it's been going out about you know maybe a little bit less than some years but uh, about normal probably so we had a, got a couple of uh, pallets of that in uh, we try to keep the um, staff over at the nursing home and here at the admin building uh, stocked with it uh, they do a really good job about putting it out on the sidewalks to help us and uh, we try to just keep their barrels and uh, the uh, bags out front stacked up so that they, they have them available. A um, couple of little projects we've been working on is um, we had some brush piles out back. Um, somewhere out there, I bet it's been six or seven years since we've gotten to, to burn some of those, just on the timing and having some snow on the ground and, and good weather. And um, so we got through and we burnt, I think, maybe six different piles out back. Um, contacted the uh, fire department, of course, to let them know what was going on and dispatch. Um, but that went good, and they've, they've burnt up pretty good. Um, some of these heavy snows that we had, that first heavy snow we had in December, really knocked down a lot of trees on our, our roads out back and such. Um, and going up to the water tower had gotten some trees knocked down. So we spent some time cleaning all, cleaning all those up to keep our roadways all, all cleaned up to go up there. Earlier this month, we had the water meter readings. Um, so we got those done and turned in had a couple of small issues that we got to go look at on, on one or two meters um, that we got to go out and try to uh, to get fixed um, so that those are good we had a uh, small water leak um, and it, this was a very minor thing it wasn't really in the system it was actually into one of our customers um, homes and but it was around the meter so I wanted to go out and check it out to see if it was our responsibility or not um, and it was not necessarily our responsibility, but within our purview to, to help the lady out. And basically, we just had to kind of tighten up a fitting is all it ended up being. Um, but that, uh, I think, made her feel good and, and helped her out with that. Um, so we, we do those kinds of things. And I think that one of the things I put on there is we do do those things quite often. And I don't report on them very often. But when we do, it's, you know, it makes our customers feel like we're responding to them and helping them out. And um, I thought it was something important to, to point out that we do those things now and then. The heater um, in the grinder building, the thermostat was replaced. Um, that's a explosion proof um, electric heater out there because of all the gases from the raw sewage coming in through there. Um, we put the new heater in about 10 years ago and we started having some issues here uh, a couple weeks ago with the uh, thermostat coming in and out. And luckily, we haven't had bitter cold weather, so we've been okay. But um, actually, um, so we got that replaced. Uh, Bob did come out and helped a little bit with that, um, and pointing out what we needed to, to do wiring wise, which was a good help. Um, and then just doing regular maintenance on our water and sewer systems. Um, 
keeping up with those kinds of issues this year or this time of the year. Um, a lot of reports this month uh, going to the state. You know, I got the disinfectant byproduct report, the usage report, our annual wastewater report um, ha is going out this month. So just a lot of uh, report writing and, and making sure it gets to the right people down at the state so that we stay current. Um, we got a new GSI system that we budgeted for last year. Um, Commissioner McCarthy's probably heard me talk about it a little bit, but we finally got that towards the end of the year. And it's a system that's going to be on a tablet, and it highlights all of our water system. And I can click on a particular uh, hydrant, for example, and it'll pull up the hydrant, and it'll show me a picture of it, and I can put in notes when the last time we flushed it, um, different things of that nature. All of our valves in the system, I'll be able to hit on each individual valve. And so it's that's a, something that we've needed for a long time because most of this kind of stuff is just um, by memory and experience and in my head. And it'll be nice to have a program that's um, readily available to us with a few touches to, to do that. And so we did some training on that, and now we're working on um, implementing the locations and things uh, for that system. And it's going to take us a little while. It's going to be an ongoing thing, I think, through the summer as we get time. You know, we'll take a day and go out and find stuff, put GPS, pictures, all those kinds of things into the system. Um, and then we did finished up fourth quarter water testing. Most of our, uh, we have testing that goes on year round um, at different times, but we also have first, second, and third quarter, fourth quarter testing. And for us, our water department tends to have the majority of their testing in third and fourth quarter. Um, so that's when you'll see more bills that come from the state lab uh, be in the third and fourth quarter. And this year, of course, we had to do the, the, they changed the law down at the state, I think it was in September, on the PFAS testing. Instead of being voluntary, now it's mandatory. So we have to test for that um, four quarters in a row before, and as long as all four quarters pass, then we're, then we're good on that testing. So fourth quarter was the first time, and then we'll be testing it this quarter, and so on and so forth. Um, we have Eastern Analytical that comes up to do that testing for us because there's a lot of different requirements and uh, it's very easy to um, mess up that test. You know, I take most of our water samples and tests, but this one I went to some specific training on and it's very complicated and I'd rather pay the small fee to have them do it rather than mess it up and have to repay the fee because these are expensive tests to have done. We're looking at probably just shy of $2,000 this year that we budgeted for this, just this PFAS testing. Um, so to me, it's not something to gamble on. I'd rather pay the few bucks to have it done by professionals that do it every day. And then we also had the groundwater testing, which Eastern Analytical does. So they do that first and second, uh, excuse me, second and fourth quarter for us. So what we're having them do is while they're here already, they're doing the PFAS testing. So it's saving us on travel time and mileage that we'd have to pay the company during those two quarters. Um, so that's another advantage of having them take care of it uh, while they're up here. And then the only other thing is uh, all the hay is sold out. Um, you know, we did, a, we did a good year on that, and, and it's all delivered. Um, you know, I got a couple bales down there for, for a few stragglers, but um, other than that, it's, it's, you know, the majority that's taken care of. Um, my notes indicate that we were around 38000 just over $38,000 that we made in, in hay, um, and almost twenty five, just shy of $2,500 in wood. Uh, that we did for this year, and I believe on the hay we were asked to make last year thirty two thousand so we exceeded that by close to six thousand dollars and then I think we were either asked for a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars on the wood i 'm not sure exactly um, so either way we exceeded uh, what we were asked on the on the wood as well for this last year so revenue wise what little bit that uh, we contribute um, I think you know was was good, and we did good with that. Um, you know, these new tools of this, the round baler and the wrapper and things have, uh, uh, again, has really um, helped pay for itself and helped us get a lot more done with a lot less help. Um, just to update the new commissioners, you know, we used to, our department used to always take inmates out. Um, you, you may be aware of that. And then starting back in March when this pandemic happened, we don't, we no longer get inmates to work on outside stuff. So it's just us staff. Um, I got one full-timer myself and I got a part-timer. And then um, in the summertime, I usually have a couple high school kids. Um, I did have that same high school kid here through Christmas break um, to help out with some stuff. And so when we can get him to help us with things we do, but that's kind of what our department is made up of. 
And um, if there's any questions that you folks would have as far as what we do or would like a tour at any time, um, I know even Commissioner McCarthy's asked about coming down at some times, just please give me a call. I always have my cell phone and can answer any questions. Um, I sign off on all the bills in my department. So past commissioners sometimes weekly call me and say, you know, Willie, would you spend this on or whatever? And, you know, and I'm usually I can most of the time I can rattle it off for you because um, we are a smaller department. But uh, if there's any questions that, that you all have for us. I just want to thank you for responding so quickly on when I called you the other day. Oh, yes, ma'am. So, thank you. Any questions for Will? No, just a comment, if yes. I may. Um, great job on the round bales. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a good. I think it's a good addition. So. Okay. Yeah. Any questions for you? Not my area of expertise, Madam Chair. Okay. Oh, I see. I see Chris down there waving. If I, I just wanted to add. You know, Will, you came in and, and you said, you know, you have a lot of information, maybe not as important as Ferguses, but. I just wanted to add that what Will does, um, you know, salting, plowing, that's very important, you know, as far as uh, keeping employees safe, cutting down on a worker's comp and slips in the parking lot and, and preventing missed time from work. So, um, you know, we may not have some fancy verbiage as, as some other departments, but uh, we all contribute in different ways, and what you guys do is, is just as important as everybody else, and, and I appreciate the work that you guys do. and on top of the snowstorms and working long days and, um, you know, it, I think everybody appreciates it. We just don't see each other face to face often, but, um, no, what you guys is very, do is very important, especially this time of year. So thanks for keeping up with it. Thank you for that. Thank you, Chris. I was thinking about that when he said that and I, and I forgot to say anything. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Will. Okay, thank you. Do you have any, any, any ongoing projects that you're coming up with or anything? Um, not too much. We're just kind of waiting to see. Um, you know, we got a few little things here and there, kind of more in the planning stages of waiting for the budget to take place and see, um, you know, how that's going to turn out for us and where we have to make some adjustments. But we do have, uh, come springtime, you know, we have a hay wagon that needs to be rebuilt that's rotted apart. And so we have some projects that need to be done. Um, and right now, more of just a planning and research, putting together numbers, and, um, and waiting for that kind of stuff, which tends to happen for us this time of the year. We'll have projects planned for this following year, but can't move on until after the budget process is done. But I like to have all my ducks in a row the best I can, so when we do get that go-ahead, you know, we're moving forward. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Okay, Chris. Can I very quickly, Madam Chair, have a point of information? Yes, you may. The it was a com it was commented before that the delegation removed six hundred thousand from the budget, but the motion here says it was moved from forty one twenty to capital expenditures capital. line ninety four on. So it wasn't removed. It wasn't from the budget. removed completely. So I wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Good. Yeah, we just had a couple follow-ups. And also, um, the new commissioners I don't think have met yet, but Leslie, my HR counterpart, is joining us on Zoom this morning. Um, her office is down in the nursing home, so she's been kind of um, segregated from us over the past few months with COVID and all that. But hopefully, they're all getting vaccinated and... We'll be able to get a good flow together soon, but um, but you'll be hearing from her and seeing from her often, and um, she's a very valuable part of the team. And hi, Leslie. How are you? Good morning. How are you all? <laughs> Hope everybody's healthy and well. So, um, just to touch base on this, some follow-ups, um, we had brought up um, asking about the sick time policy change, uh, reducing the hours that somebody qualifies to accrue sick time from 20 hours to 16 hours, which would allow um, people who work two eight-hour shifts a week to accrue. Um, it would currently affect six employees, 
Um, those employees, if they worked their two shifts all year, uh, would end up accruing um, about 38 and a half sick hours over the whole year, um, which would come to about $3,500. But that's, uh, so yeah, so it would affect about six current employees. Um, but the, the uh, since the CIS for this was um, actually the, the nursing home, I don't know if Leslie wants to speak on it a little um, more in depth, but uh, Howie and Leslie thought it would be a, a great idea, um, especially towards retention of some of our nurses that just work part-time um, in recruiting those part-time nurses. I'm looking at Leslie on the screen like she can see me, but... Leslie, would you like to say something? Yes, I would. Um, primarily over here, um, the way that this policy would really benefit us in offering um, just somewhat of a, a small perk to our staff, uh, there used to be something called the Baylor Program. Um, there are many of the nursing homes and hospitals uh, throughout the area in the country where nurses would work every Friday and Saturday. They do 12 or 16 hour shifts and they'd be considered like a full time employee. Many of them would only work 32 hours a week or 24 hours a week, and they were treated as such. Um, they, those programs were implemented because Saturdays and Sundays or Friday nights are the most difficult times to staff a nursing home. You know, whether someone wants to go to their child's sporting event, or they have a wedding, or they have a family gathering, or a birthday, or the list just goes on and on for requests. Um, here in our facility, many of the people that worked uh, 16 hours a week worked every Friday 3-11 and Saturday 3-11. They are invaluable to us. Um, they show up every week. They don't call out um, and actually stumbled upon this because we had a gentleman um, who worked every Friday and Saturday for years now. Um, finally get sick <laughs> after, you know, me being here a year, it was his first call out in a year. And it, it brought to light that, you know, somebody like him who's so valuable to us in the staffing of our facility, um, you know, we would like to take care of him when, when he needs the hand, um, you know, in the rare event that they get ill or would like to once a year have a Saturday off to, um, you know, attend something important to us. Um, it comes through for us, and we'd like to be able to uh, show up for them as well. Uh, so we feel that this would be a great benefit to uh, many of our staff. Um, that's not the only example. Uh, many of our dietary staff, um, they cover those uh, weekend needs um, where, you know, staffing is down on the weekends because of, you know, whatever reason, mostly requests off vacation coverage, things of that nature. It, it would really um, be nice to offer this the people that um, support us on our most difficult shifts to staff. Okay. Leslie, is this just for the nursing home? This has to be county, the whole complex. This is... Uh, I would recommend county one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know when Chris and I looked at it, I think there are a couple people from the sheriff's office, some dispatchers, uh, that were part-time as well. Um, just off the top of my head, I don't... This would be better to answer that. I don't, I don't pay as much attention to the rest of the county these days. Mostly just down here. Yeah, it, it, it broke down to about six, and uh, three dietary aides, um, the RN, um, and a couple in the sheriff's department. Um, but yeah, it would be a county non-union policy affecting those people, and then anybody we hire on after is. Yeah. And these, these individuals, by the way, are also not covered under the union contract. So um, as far as, um, you know, retention and um, recruiting and perks, through these difficult just having this small thing to offer them is, is nice. We lock them in on those hours. They're not per diem. The hours don't go by their availability. They're locked in. They have that schedule uh, where we can depend on Yes. So currently the policy is 20 hours for them to be part-time? No, it's 20 hours for them to qualify for sick time accrual. So I guess my question would be, is there a way to change the shifts so that they work two shifts, two 10-hour shifts and hit the 20 hours? 
Not really. Um, oftentimes, um, it's not appealing to them to do, especially if they're doing Friday and Saturday, a 10-hour shift back to back like that. Um, they don't really like that as much. Um, we have offered 12 to people. Um, they turn them down. Um, having somebody just, it would be more beneficial for us from a staffing perspective to have a four hour. So instead of making it a 10, it, making it a 12 with working, we do have some employees that work 12, or they have, you know, an additional shift to, to make themselves whole. Um, these individuals just do the eight hour shifts. And in the kitchen, we wouldn't really have the need as much for the 10 hour shift. Um, I mean, I guess we could be over for a couple hours here and there. Um, more staff is, is better than not enough, um, but I do find that there's not much of a desire for a 10-hour shift. Matthew, um, comments? So I'm, I'm trying to get my hands around this. What Could you articulate why we need to do this? Is this essential to retain these employees? And I, I mean, I... Um, Some, I think, would be impacted by, you know, if they put in, you know, this gentleman, um, he doesn't ever ask for, for much. He's just one of those guys, you know, the RN especially, he's, he's one of those amazing employees who shows up, he gets the job done, he doesn't call out, he doesn't ask for a lot, he, he just comes here to work hard. Um, he's doing his part. Um, we don't typically recruit for these type of hours. These are people that have sort of fill the need within the facility that was like a one-off need. Um, you know, that's why they're so few. We mm -hmm. typically don't look for people to work just two shifts a week. Um, but for whatever reason, you know, prior to my coming on board with the facility, they were built into the schedule and they have the longevity. They've been doing it for a while. Um, I think, I don't think it's a, a must. I think it's more of it would be very beneficial um, to treat them, um, you know, with just they treat them. I think that it would be an, a nice, good, honorable thing to do for them based on their level of commitment. You know, somebody who works every single weekend, um, that that's difficult and very, it's a challenge for us to staff the weekends. So if we could offer them some benefit to keep them here versus go somewhere else or go agency where they're going to make more money for having no benefits, um, I, I think that they would be more inclined to do that. I think offering this will help keep people here longer mm -hmm. versus, you know, if I don't have benefits or sick time or vacation, why don't I just go agency? I'd rather have them here every Friday and Saturday. Madam Chair, may I ask another question? Yes. Um, so I'm looking at the policy and line number five for the procedure says that full-time and part-time employees may accrue up to a maximum of 65 days of sick leave. Because we're changing the sick time policy, could we say that they use it that year or they lose it so we're not paying it out in future years because it's sick, it's not earned time, as opposed to letting them accrue these? I mean, that's a more... That's been up for discussion on, on what to do about that. Yeah, it, that, it, that is a possibility. Um, I don't know if that's if we can make that decision today or not because um, um, we, that's been up for discussion because we do have the, uh, the sick payouts at the end of the year that well, I think has been it's an a, issue. For me, anyways, I don't know if, if the chair has a different perspective. It's different for... It, we're extending to these six people a benefit they don't currently have. Right. I'm not opposed to it, but I don't think they should get to bank it. I it's mean, sick policy. It's sick that we're extending to them that they wouldn't normally be entitled to for the proposed purpose of their sick. So these people that would be affected, it would um, they would accrue less than five days a year, so it would take them. I don't know how many years to get up to that threshold, years. but... Um, well, that's what I mean. If they're not using them, they're going to have the ability to roll them over because they're never going to hit this cap. Yeah. It, and it shouldn't be then become be used as an annual. It's almost like this policy to me because you're allowing them to bank 
you'll end up giving them some kind of like annual leave after the first year because they'll accrue them. Presume they don't take them in sick. Now they have time they can take that is in, in a bank, so to speak. And I just, yeah. when you're already extending these people a benefit that they wouldn't normally be entitled to under the county's policy, I, I think everybody should be able to take a sick day, especially people who work in the medical community. So I'm not against the policy. I'm against the last part of it, which is that it will accrue for them. I think if we're extending them a benefit, it, sh it shouldn't accrue. So maybe, so maybe keep that wording currently for the over 20s, but if we extend it to people that only work the six, less than 20, like the 16 to 20, then they, it's use it or lose it? So I don't know. One thing to keep in mind with that sick time filing, they have to have 280 hours in their bank to buy it out, correct? Yes. Okay, so that means they have to have 280. So if they're getting five, they're getting 40 hours, I don't want to speak for Commissioner Tassari, but I think she, I think she was saying not so much the um, payout, but just the, you know, after a year they'd have over a week of sick time to utilize, which may be a concern. And then say it's a fruit, I can foresee it taking, actually taking a toll on the nursing home because when they get days to take off. They're not doing a calculation in their head about, oh, should I take this day or not? There's a policy that allows them to take it. Now you need more staff people because they're taking more time. Like, I, I want to I give this benefit, but I want to be cautious about the way in which we're giving it, I guess, is my perspective. Well, Chris knows how I feel about the, the buybacks. I, I, that's something I would like to really look into. That's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. To, to, well, I just, so, uh, can't we just I'm strike it from five? Because this only applies to employees. Right. Oh, no, up at the top you're saying it would apply to everybody. Yeah. We're just lowering the threshold for the number of hours worked to qualify. So the, these few number of, of employees, they're the only ones that now do not get sick. You're 20, uh, you're 20 and over, do. Correct. So it's just these few that are not. Right. And I have no problem with giving them a sick day. But I, I, I have the same problem with this. If they don't use them, that when, they, when they leave, then they have the ability we have to pay them. Well, do we do it sort of like maybe personal days where it, it, the 16th? Instead of stick days, they could be personal days? Yeah, maybe we give them two personal days. Instead of accruing sick time or something like that. I would personally feel more comfortable with that kind of model. Or a bank where they can request it and the county can take it on an individual basis as to whether or not we grant them a sick day. But to, to change this policy, I, I'm not worried about the six people the nursing home currently has. I'm worried about every temp and every person who's hired to come on and just do a little project for this agency or that agency. Once they meet that 16 hours, now they're getting this. And I just, it was, it's at 20 for a reason. I know it only seems like something small to lower it to four, but every time you lower it, you catch more and more and more employees. And Leslie, would that, would you be okay with changing it from sick days to personal days so that they do get... I think that's a very fair meet in the middle, and I think it makes sense. I think it's a great idea. Maybe, <laughs> we just thought of it. Maybe three <laughs> personal. I would say they should be entitled to three personal days a year. I mean, how many? I most, like it. How many? How many days do they? That way, they. Well, and if you're following our sick time policy, they it literally has to be for sick absence. If these people have a personal day, say they have, um, you know, uh, a graduation, say they're child graduating medical school and you know that's a really proud day but it's on their scheduled day off they could use the personal day to attend that nine times out of ten it's more likely to be scheduled versus a surprise where we have to find coverage and a scramble um i, I like the personal day approach i think that really makes a lot of sense here and personal days you use them or lose them right yes, yes personal days are lost at the end of the year and i think everybody gets two everybody gets two 
at, at the beginning of the year. Yep. Including full time. Including full time. Full -time. Uh, down to 20 hours. Yep. Well, could we say that if, if you work, uh, yeah, no, that would be a mess. Okay. okay. So I think, I personally also would think that it makes more sense. Yep. Also, the way this is written, you don't need a doctor's note right. until after three consecutive days. And if you're only working two, you'll never get to three. Right. So, okay. Okay. It's Chris, would you rewrite? Uh, um, I'll get a personal day policy. Revision. Just for? Yep. Okay. And we'll take it up next week and sign it. And All right. Because this is a countywide yeah, it'll be kind change, of like in change. the future. Right. And, you know, we don't know the, the ramifications. Yep. Okay. Great. Um, and then, additionally, um, we had uh, spoke about the uh, emergency paid sick leave program um, for COVID absences, and I didn't have any cold hard facts for you last week. So, um, uh, from April to December, we were actually averaging about 304 hours of utilization a month, um, which cost about uh, 60, it, it, we were getting reimbursed for that, but if that average moved forward for January, February, March, it would cost the county about $6,350. Um, and that's just to cover the hours, that doesn't include you know any taxes or payroll taxes and that sort of thing. Um, however, uh, when we were putting this together, um, Leslie highlighted that um, we do suspect to see a, a, a sharp decline in those hours used because of the uh, weekly testing at the nursing home um, before some of those days were used, you know, awaiting test results and that sort of thing. Um, now that there's regular testing going on, um, we don't have uh, that much time out of work pending test results. Um, and that um, the vaccine is rolled out. So the nursing homes already received their first dose and, and they'll be receiving their second dose soon. Um, and then the jails starting week. next week, yeah. And then the jails starting to get their vaccinations going too. So, um, so those are some numbers pertaining to that. But but we don't see those averages um, staying the same going forward for the next you know through the spring. Yeah, we we're doing um, rapid testing every Tuesday and standard testing every Thursday. So our staff are testing twice a week. Um, the first test of the week is right here. We have results within 15 minutes. If somebody shows up to the door with symptoms, we're now able to um, not only just evaluate, screen, track, and um, require um, any sort of additional medical clearances or notes from that employee, but we're also able to test them on the spot um, if, if our director of infection prevention feels that their symptoms warrant that. Prior to having all this at our fingertips, we were sort of at the mercy of the timeline. They have you know, a fever over 99, if they have a runny nose, if they have a cough, you have to send them home. Um, that's changing now that testing is more readily available, turnaround times are quicker, and the vaccine has been deployed. Um, we're, we're, we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and we're grabbing onto it. Um, our staff has done a great job, um, and uh, we do expect that um, the number of people out each week will just decrease. Uh, this week specifically, we only have two employees that are out, um, and they're out because of confirmed cases within their immediate household. Um, it's, you know, to keep our residents safe and our workforce healthy, um, we do expect to see far less people out pending testing. And again, this would be an extension from uh, January 1st through March 31st to utilize that benefit. Madam Chair, may I? Yep. I'm just reading this email. Am I right that when we talked about last week was there's a possibility that we may be reimbursed, but we don't know, and so we were going to operate under the assumption we may not get reimbursed? Is that right, though? But there still is a possibility. I, uh, I that's a way above my head. I, I would, uh, it, I don't, I couldn't even tell you maybe. I, that's why I'm saying assume that we're not. But we did get reimbursed previous to this. Yeah. Correct. Is 
So this is, if we do this, it's going to cost us, uh, this doesn't even, this estimate doesn't even um, take into consideration taxes or anything either. Right, that's just kind of like covering the gross hours, you know, the average pay rate for the people who utilize it. And they, Leslie, yeah. Um, you know, we did have some higher level people out in the beginning with this. Um, primarily, it is, um, you know, your LDs and your housekeepers. Um, their pay range is, is far less than $20. So, um, you know, there, there may be some, some room in between on that average. It may be less, it may be a little more. Um, uh, it's been very beneficial to our staff. Um, and their families. Uh, nobody wants to get that call uh, that you're home for two weeks without pay and you can't leave the house and you can't do anything and you know there's no way to make it up. Um, it, it really does impact our workforce. Um, these are people that are dealing with you know daycare closures, uh, finding alternative child care, um, Spouses that are out of work, not being able to work their second job, waitressing on the weekends, because that puts our residents at risk. Um, not being able to work in, you know, another facility because they are positive. Um, a lot of them have really hunkered down and buckled down and done what they needed to do um, to stay healthy and safe and keep our residents that way. And this benefit has uh, truly assisted them in meeting their obligation and. Um, their dedication to us throughout COVID. Um, I feel as though extending it to those individuals, especially, um, you know, till we get through this, till we're all vaccinated, till we start to see numbers in our community go below percent, ten percent. Those are high numbers. Um, you know, it, it is a, a true benefit to the employees, and I believe that it has really been a tool in uh, keeping them going. A lot easier to sit at home and collect that extra three hundred dollars for unemployment than it is to go and work in, in a facility that could potentially become COVID positive at any moment. Um, I, I really feel that it would be of tremendous value to our to the county and our staff if we extended this program to them. Howie, do you have anything to add? It looks like he's unmuting. No, I, I agree with Leslie completely. This pandemic is a singular event, and we're going to be judged in the future by how we react to it, whether that be compassionately or uncaringly, and we'll be judged accordingly. So while I have some concerns about the potential of it being misused or misused, that's the 5%, and we can't punish the 95%. Uh, who, who could really need it. Um, so I would, I would encourage that, that we do it. Um, and, and, I, and I'm optimistic too, we get our second vaccination for staff and residents next Wednesday. Um, not that that's going to be the end of the pandemic, but it could well be the end of the critical part for all our residents and most of our staff. If, if I might just add, um, I didn't get a chance to touch upon the tire with the commissioners, uh, but I know Howie, Chris, and myself have talked about it quite a bit. Um, I wanted to give you a, a clearer picture of the oversight of the program um, here at Mountain Beauty because primarily the bulk of the staff that are going to utilize the stuff that have been here. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about my experience thus far with this. So when I started working with the county last year, I thought this was insane. Um, I, it was just me, and we deemed essential staff non-essential, <laughs> basically said they could, you know, if their kids weren't in school or they were scared to come to work or they had, you know, a mom with a health condition, I just saw everybody jumping ship and being scared. Um, what we discovered in the last year, um, 10 months, is that is not our core group of employees. Um, they have shown up, they've done the job. We have worked with employees. Uh, when they reach out to myself or their supervisor and they say, you know, my kids are remote learning, we look to changing the schedule, swapping days. Um, if you need to be on Zoom from 8 to 10, maybe 7 to 3 doesn't work for you. How about we take somebody from 3 to 11, put them on 7 to 3, and put you on 3 to 11? 
Um, this, we, we don't start with this. This is if there's no other option for the employee. I get letters from the school. I verify those letters. I call and verify their authenticity. I make sure uh, before approving this leave that it is a legitimate leave and that we have done everything we can as an employer to meet the needs of the employees as well as the needs of our building. It's a very difficult time to recruit and to staff. Um, people aren't jumping up and down and doing cartwheels to go work in a long-term care facility right now. Um, so replacing these people is, is difficult. Um, and they've been open to working with us. Um, we've only had three people in total that we granted this leave for. Um, one was a partial. She worked, um, I believe it was 24, 30 hours a week. And then we supplemented 10 hours of it each week with the um, extended FMLA to make her whole after she used her sick and vacation time. So some people do have quite a bit of a bank. Um, and we were able to work that out with her. Uh, we had another uh, mother who was a young single mother, uh, two kids, both remote learning. Her mom um, was uh, very ill, and she was the primary babysitter. Um, she had one in school and one in daycare. Mom couldn't take care of them any part of the day, even 3 to 11 if we took her off days and put her to evening. She just didn't have a place. And at that time, there weren't too many daycare openings that she could afford. Um, she would have been working basically for, for peanuts at that point, and it wouldn't have made sense for her to stay working with both of them in daycare. Um, so uh, we did extend, extend this to her. As far as the, um, that's sort of my synopsis of the extended FMLA. For the 80 hours, um, there's a big process to this. People don't get to just call out with a runny nose or sore throat or stuffy head. Um, they call out, they're screened by infection prevention. Um, they are many times evaluated in person at the door. Um, they are sent for testing. Um, you, this is not one of those things where if you have IBS, um, you're able to use your COVID hours for it. Um, we are very diligent, we track it, we follow up. Um, and it, we believe we've done a really good job managing it over here. Um, again, as I said earlier, the, the biggest struggle we faced in the beginning was the turnaround time on testing. If we had employees shut up and had a fever of 100 at the door, we were at the mercy of the test and waiting eight days for the results to come back sometime. So um, we have more resources at our fingertips now, and I really truly believe we can continue to keep a good and manage it. And, I really, um, I have a lot of faith in our core group of employees. Um, I found them to be honest and ethical, and I've learned a lot over the last year. I no longer think anybody was crazy uh, making this move for them. In fact, I agree with this wholeheartedly. Okay. Matthew? Discussion? Uh, yes. Uh, this is for Chris. How many employees would be affected outside the nursing home? Well, so there's approximately 100 employees outside the nursing home. So um, minus the per diems, I, I'd have to look it up. So less than 100. Would this, so would this only be the nursing home? Or? No, it's the whole county. The nursing home's the majority of the employees. Uh, however, it would be the entire county. And the numbers that you, I guess this is just a guesstimate, but uh, does that cover the whole county? Correct. Okay. And Ms. Leslie um, said that so far they've only had three people that have had to use this. Is that was what she said? Since the need. For the extended FMLA, yeah. So the extended FMLA is just if somebody uses up their 12 weeks, they get an extension. So that's not necessarily any cost to the county except for the missed time because they would be using their paid time off. The emergency paid sick leave, the, that other program is the one that would be at the expense of the county if um, it's decided to extend it through March. Is, is there any chance we could get that money back through a grant? If you had to ask me that right now, I would say no. But it, it, 
you know, the new administration. I don't know if there's going to be a new act put in place, COVID relief type of thing that would provide money for that, but that would just be speculation. Um, I guess, Madam Chair, I would say I'd love to do this for the employees. I think it's important, and I think they're right. They're going to get it from some other employers, so if we don't do it, we become less competitive employment-wise. My concern would be is I don't want to pay out this and the money from one of the non-publics from last week. For me, it's a one or the other. So my decision on this would be dependent on that. I'm not sure I follow you. So you're saying you... I follow So I follow her, last week we talked about yeah. a potentially $75,000. We may have to come up with... Um, if we have to pay that out now, adding this, which is twenty, we're looking at nearly a hundred thousand, ninety thousand dollars. I, I don't want to pay out both, so I would rather get an answer to our other question and table this, and that would be my recommendation until we had an answer to the other one, which we won't get until the delegation meets on Monday. Is this time sensitive, or can well, we wait till? So what we what we've asked um, people to do who've been out is just to put in normal sick time, and then if this is approved, we'll go back and 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 okay. do what we have to do to okay. adjust. Um, so we've been tracking it all. We tracked it all weekly. So if we needed to make an adjustment, we could. Um, but again, I think we my my biggest concern is the newer employee or the employee. Who doesn't have, you know, is, you know, part time or, you know, under part time people that would be out for COVID with, without anything. Um, they don't technically qualify for unemployment. Um, we have had people um, who were out due to COVID uh, get denied for unemployment. Um, we had a nurse who left here, went to another facility, um, got COVID before she started at the other facility, was out of work for two weeks. and was denied unemployment. So, you know, there are some people right now that are hurting, um, and I just worry about the ones that don't have any time in the bank if God forbid they get COVID. Okay. So it could be the only time sensitive one. I, I'm in agreement with Kim on this. Madam Chair, may I ask a question? Yes. Um, I'm not completely familiar with the sick bank policy of the county or, or if there's actually a structured sick bank process, do um, employees have the ability to donate their sick time to those people who would otherwise qualify for this program? They do. And how would we go about, or how, how would an employee go about donating their time or, or learning of these opportunities? Chris? Well, oh, one of the things that I, I, I watch every week with our payroll is who doesn't meet their hours. Um, and if somebody doesn't meet their hours, I look at why. Are they out sick? Why aren't they getting to use their full 40 hours? Uh, Ruby also checks this as well. Um, I, I had this happen two weeks ago. We had an employee that was out due to COVID. Um, she, her two weeks were up of the 80 hours. Um, she had nothing. Um, and her somebody uh, was kind enough because she you know, would have gone without pay for a week and voiced this out with a concern to her. Um, we reached out to somebody who volunteered to donate their time and they were able to do so. The employee didn't go without a paycheck. Um, we are able to do that if people are willing to donate it. And there, and so I there is a policy. I try to make policy. sure nobody goes without a paycheck. Yeah, not, we do have a policy on, on that. And, and what is, Madam Chair, if I might follow up, what is the process for donating time? I don't, I don't actually know that. I've okay. never... Since I've been here, I don't think we've even had it. I do know there is a policy. I've read it, but I don't remember, okay. to be honest with you. Thank you. There is a form, um, which I make readily available to anybody that um, says they'd like to donate or is requesting. Um, over the summer, we had somebody, John Steele, that was out on leave for a little bit, and um, the superintendent at the time, um, as, you know, I asked him, hey, you mind sending out an email to your staff? Um, asking if anybody would be interested in donating time, and um, they were able to get just about 80 hours for that employee donated. Um, so, you know, we're a community, we stick together. I think that 
might be a nice thing until we feel comfortable making a decision. Um, keep it on our radar if there's anybody without pay to see if we can drum up some time to donate. Great. Well, my personal opinion is um, I don't think that we should make a decision. Our decision should be based on what the delegation's decision is on the budget. Um, but if the other two commissioners feel that way, then I really, I don't have a choice. So we can put this off until next Wednesday. Thank you. And, and my last um, item, uh, and I don't even know if this really requires a, a commissioner vote or not, was the flex spending account um, topic, ex extending the availability of that um, from the, uh, for people to utilize their flex spending accounts from December uh, through June. Um, that was an option uh, that we could give give people. Um, I, and I brought it up uh, last week um, to see if the commissioners were okay with that. Um, the cost is, is um, according to our representative who, who runs those accounts, said it's negligible, just some maybe... Uh, minor administrative fees for keeping the account open, but um, otherwise it's just kind of extending that benefit, which we've voted to extend last June for them to utilize their accounts through December, and then um, the CARES Act allowed for us to do it again to continue on through the end of this um, benefits year, which would be June. We should absolutely do that. It's their money. If the CARES Act allows it, so let's extend it. I'll await a motion on that then if it's no. I'd, I'd like to make a motion to do that, okay. to extend that flex spending. I would second. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. You are welcome. Chris, anything else for us? Um, that's it for today. Thank okay. you for your time. Oh, thank you for it. all your thank work. You. Thank you, Leslie, for joining us. It's nice to see you again. <laughs> Chris, I look forward to meeting everybody in person. <laughs> and you too, Howie. See you, Joe. <laughs> okay, so the next would be um, the Treasurer's Report. Joe, you have anything for us? Joe? I'll unmute myself. I'm sorry. That's okay. Do you have anything for us that you need to discuss? I do. Okay. I do have a couple of things. First off, um, I noted that there was nothing in the minutes this past week about our discussion um, with regards to potential liability um, for the additional funds payable to the staff uh, for overtime. It seems to me if my memory is correct. Oh, Treasurer, Joe. Treasurer. That was non public, Joe. Thank you. Non public. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, I can't. If I don't. Uh, That's why I you didn't. Know if anybody... It would be in the non public record. <laughs> I took detailed okay. non public notes. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you. So, what I have for the commissioners today. Uh, hearing that uh, um, all of 2019 um, is done and the accounts are balanced, what I'm wanting to do going forward is I want to provide the commissioners with a um, monthly report that shows the checkbook um, starting balance, um, less any debits, plus any credits, and then the ending balance. At the same time, I'd like to show the commissioners the department budgets with the original amounts. Again, less any debits, plus any credit, and the balance on each department's budget with a percentage compared year to date by month. Um, also, for the TAN note, um, I'd like to show the commissioners on a monthly basis the amount available and then the amount that's used and the balance still available. 
So this gives the commissioners a little more detail as to where we are from a financial standpoint. Um, this is going to take some work with the, with the financial office uh, to be able to do this, but this is a process that I want to get started sooner rather than later. And speaking of the TAN, at this point I have no idea where we are with it. Um, I think I reported last week that uh, we were waiting a uh, cash flow projection. I don't know if that's happened yet or not. I'm a little myth that the treasurer seems to be left out of a lot of these conversations. And I think that that has got to change. Um, Joe, I think when things um, settle down a little bit for you, um, the finance department now is having meetings once a week. And that might be okay. something that you want to partake in. I'm not sure. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I think I think the communications is very important, and that's one of the problems that we seem to have at times. Um, but I'm not picking on any one person or any one department. I just think it's important that we all communicate. Agreed. Anything else, Joe, for you? Uh, nothing else uh, from the treasurer's office unless there's any questions. No, I have some things for Hales, though, um, since okay. you're not here. Um, I have the MS-22. Excellent. For the schools, um, which has been prepared and we have to sign. Um, and I have the MS-232. Yes. So... These are documents that Denise needs to uh, provide to, to the uh, state level. State level, yes. Um, so I guess I will make a motion um, that we sign the MS-22. It's the Hales Location Local School that has to go into the state, because mm -hmm. we are. So um, <clears throat> would you like to take a look Should at these? Before? Take you can take a look at them. Yeah. They're normal. Mm -hmm. Things, but we are now the school board, also. Okay, so I would second your motion. Okay. Yeah, it's you're on the school board, and here's this one. Oh, there's two. Yep. Okay. She I would make them. No, I'm okay. good. I okay. would second your motion to adopt both of them. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. We will sign these, and these will be done. Should we sign them now? Yep. Okay. I'm going right back in the folder. Then I also have um, two deposits, actually three deposits, Joe. Um, one is in the total of uh, $4,685, another, mm -hmm. one, another one for $462, and another one for $12,174.83, and these are all um, tax. Right. Tax. So. Um, if you would like, uh, please have Laura use my stamp on okay. those. And then if she copies them, uh, she'll give them back to you so you can return them to uh, Denise. Okay, we'll do that. And then the other thing I have is um, I received a letter. I was here yesterday from um, the uh, Stephen Hamilton, who was doing our assessing at Hales. Mm -hmm. And it was mm -hmm. a, a letter to uh, Whitney Consulting saying that they hadn't gotten um, mm -hmm. the USPAP report for Hales, um, DRA. Mm. So I called Mr. Hamilton yesterday, because I wasn't sure if that was something that we had dropped or it was them. And it is the um, right. it is their department. Um, he assured me that that will be going out this week. There's no fine, there's no... It has okay. nothing to do with anyone at Hales, per se. It's just this, this company didn't do what they were supposed to do. So, okay. uh, um, so will that go to Denise, and she'll yeah, I'll give handle this to, that, or what are we doing? Yeah, I'll give this to Denise. Um, 
and she can have it in the file, but he has assured me that it will be going out this week. They have everything they need. Um, they're just we're short okay. staffed and late. So Okay. So that's okay. And well that's a good thing. We didn't we we didn't mess that one up, so that's a good no, thing. No, we didn't do that. And um, <laughs> he said we will have because we have not gotten their signed contract yet for next year. So um, I asked him about that because we have it was approved and everything, but we're awaiting a clean copy for us to sign, and he said that will get he'll get that out to us this week also. Okay, good. We'll keep an eye out for that. Yeah. We'll probably go to Denise directly yeah. Uh, yeah. to the Hales address. Yeah. And uh, um, if I don't catch up with Denise, I got a couple documents that I get to give her, but okay. uh, I haven't even catch up with. That's my fault. Um, but uh, yeah. if you can return those to her after yeah. everything's copied today by uh, Laura, you'll be that would be great. Yep, yeah, we'll do. Okay, and that's all. Um, Thank I, you. That's all I have for Hales. So, Madam Chair. Yes. Excellent. Do you need a motion to approve authorizing the treasurer to sign those checks for Hales? I don't have any checks. Oh, I thought no, I'm no, sorry. No, they were no, they're just. I misunderstood. No. That you had tax refund checks. No. Okay. Sorry. Thank That's you. okay. <laughs> yeah. the, only, the only thing we're signing is the deposit receipts. Deposit yeah. receipts. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Then I guess we'll go to Melissa, our executive coordinator. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, in the interest of time, the only thing I really had for you today is the um, proposed draft of the line item transfer policy. I know that you just received it in your... Uh, mailboxes this morning, um, but I would ask that you would consider um, review and and maybe adopting it at your next meeting. Okay. Give you time to look it over. Okay. I have attached the relevant RSAs. What okay. I find is a lot of times we focus on only the one that was adopted and that passed in 2015 um, for Carroll County line item transfers, but we should, I believe, consider the related RSAs as well as to what um, exceeding an appropriation is um, that address the line item um, mm -hmm. budgets and also what the penalty is for exceeding line mm -hmm. items. Um, I think those are important too because I remember five years ago when this was put into law that law. that was all part of part of it. Yeah. It, and it that's wasn't why just the... a focus on um, line items. It was an overall thing. And if I may, that's why the Carroll County specific one was mm -hmm. put in. Um, yeah, I think they should have a couple. Sure. Why was that? Why was it one put in for Carroll County specifically? specifically? Yeah. Because of the uh, misappropriations and going over line appropriations and yeah, they stuff. looked at it. If I remember, they looked at it as a bigger, a broad, on a broader scale. Right. That if you overspend your office supply line, you're exceeding appropriations, and there's actually a penalty, and I believe it's a misdemeanor. And misdemeanor. I mean, they were really looking at the broader sense, not just how columns were adding up <laughs> or not. So. so if you guys would, you know, take a look at this, and we can vote on it next week. I think that's a good idea, and I would say just, you know, I would I would like to read the first sentence, which I fully agree with. It shall be the policy of Carroll County to conduct line item transfers in a manner that is transparent and in accordance with state law. Exactly. I, so, and then I applaud gives, that. It gives guidance to um, the, the department heads mm -hmm. on how to achieve that, mm -hmm. to meet that policy. Yeah. Um, and it just it, it holds us accountable to make sure in house that we're following the proper procedures. So, mm -hmm. but thank you for considering it. Um, we all know how it's supposed to go, but when it's yeah. when it's in writing, make sure that we all know the same thing. It's <laughs> um, awfully short. Say it, taken it is very. I tried to, to get it done very properly an hour. <laughs> wow. Somebody wants to revert <laughs> back to the old ways. <laughs> <laughs> so we won't. Okay. Hey. We're um, going to do it properly. Yeah. <laughs> The only other thing, Madam Chair, if I might um, follow up on the conversation about the uh, Association of Counties. Um, personally, I think this is an oppor a great opportunity for us to highlight um, Carroll County and the yep. Washington Valley, um, especially in a time when so many small businesses and, and people have been affected by the pandemic. I'm, I feel fortunate that we didn't just miss our place in line because it got canceled last year. And um, I... I too have a lot uh, have experience 
organizing events and so forth, so I'd be more than happy to um, assist in that yeah. and work with organizations in the Valley to help out. Madam Chair, I can also do tasks as assigned. I'm not a great planner, but I can follow <laughs> instructions. <laughs> so I'm going to, I will get with them and ask them to send me, um, and there must be some timeline they must be some, be, yeah. so we can aware work of. on that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And that's all I have. And there's money involved, okay. too, so, yes. unfortunately, so. Yeah. Okay. And, and getting yeah. donations and, yep. and doing things in a different way than just mm -hmm. shelling out money. I'm more than happy yeah. to mm -hmm. work on it. Great. Okay. Um, Thank you. Want to hear back from them? Maybe we can put a, a small committee together. I'm sure there's other people okay. I would enjoy. Can I make right a too. motion to put you in charge of that committee? <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait on that. Yeah, we'll wait on that. <laughs> Hearing no second, it's all dead. <laughs> talk about the the website agreement oh and I bring that with me I I ha would have to go grab it off my desk did you have the opportunity did all of you have the opportunity to kind of just look it over there were no changes there were no changes we yeah. do need a website host I yes. do need a partner if it's approved in the budget to make updates and revisions and I feel like Civic Plus is the company we should stick with that's yep. that was my opinion um, the bill has to be paid by the end of the month or we incur a small Yes. charged, but a small, I, I hate to incur any. Did you guys have a chance to go through it? Uh, if I not, we not. can do it next week. I did but, not. But we uh, have to do it next week because it'll be the last week wait, we can do it. They get to fill fate. Yeah. I did, and I didn't see anything glaring. Yeah, it see anything. reflected the one they previously had, which has been satisfactory. Yep. I didn't see any glaring legal oversights that put my contracts course law to use, which is always... I'd, I'd like to look it over. Uh, okay. My, I would make a comment that I think we could do a lot more with our website. Yep. Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. including more transparency of what's going on. And, so. and when that time comes, if I might, I, I would like to get more voices in, mm -hmm. you know, on the, on the complex, as well as some outside folks, like how user-friendly is it? What would you like to see? I don't think it's very user-friendly. I think it was done... <laughs> when it was initially set up and since it's been run it's just been kind of done from the administration yeah. building and I think we need more people involved yep. to help us out. Okay. All right, so we'll take that up next week. That will give you time, okay Matthew? Yes. Okay. Right. Did we update the commissioners yet? Not yet. <laughs> no, we did. Yeah. Oh, the okay. commissioners, yes. Yeah, I thought you meant that we talked about them. <laughs> I thought what you thought. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's on the website. Yeah, he's on the website. Oh. Uh, okay. We can talk anytime about the website. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, commissioners' comments, anyone? I've already had everything I had. So, Matthew? Sure. I, I want to thank Joe, though, uh, for his idea and his proposal to give us monthly updates yeah. on reconciliations and the status of department budgets. I think that's critical, I think it's important, and I think it will help with transparency uh, for the public, and it will help us make sure we don't get into a situation like we've seen over the past few years. So, thank okay. you for that. Yep. I have no comments. No comments? Wow, okay. Any media questions? Yes, Madam Chair. Yeah, of course. You would let us down, would you? Okay, I hate to ignore the elephant in the room, but about the auditor's on-site on uh, presentation, we just finished up, I should say, the county just finished up the 2019 reconciliations. You really don't have a completed audit. All of 2020 has not been reconciled, and you're also in violation of the statute mm -hmm. completely. You can't even deny that. Nobody has. What I think should happen is the auditor should come in and answer to the customer why they didn't follow state statute and just let the chips fall where they lie. Now, if for some reason they can't talk about certain things, you have an option and exemption to go into non-public. Right. We need an answer of why this has been going on for three years. And what would be your recommendation if they refuse? 
read the contract. That's what I say. That's so, what I but I don't know how they yeah. could refuse. And you know, I mean, if if they can't tell you why they didn't complete the job, then they broke their contract. Right. I can say that now. So I would look at that. Did they follow the contract line by line? And if they did not, then they, you deserve an answer of why they did not do it. I agree. And Whatever it is. And that's why I stated I will check that contract out today. It's downstairs and see what we can do. But I agree with you. My second question is the representation letter. It's not a management letter. It's a representation it's letter. letter. Yep. Why did Melanson send you a representation letter what does that even mean in definition? Because I had no idea, and I had asked for that last week. And I believe that you were going to review it. And I thought it was on the agenda, but I don't know if, if you're going to do that today. I, I, the cut, the, 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 um, your constituents are asking me to find out what is this representation letter. When I go and seek an attorney, I get right. a representation letter. So, And in the last week's meeting, the, the verbiage was used, attorney. Don't know if that was a misspeak, but the, um, the CFO mentioned representation letter and he mentioned attorney. So I don't know what that all is about, so I wish I would have some answer to that. And also, I'm still waiting on my 91 request. Thank yes, you. I was going to um, ask Melissa what's going on with the ones that we gave, that Ed gave us last week. So, um, Mr. Ask off camera, I would like to make sure that I have the correct email address for you that you would like things to be sent to, and I'll be sure that you receive them. Um, and if that's acceptable to respond in writing on your email. Yes. And I believe that I, I gave you the yes. government oversight at protonmail.com as that's the correct. What I did not have saved. Thank you. I mean, I can comment on this. Okay. Uh, are we doing this now, Madam Chair? Since Ed has brought it up, yeah, we do have to get this signed today, and I'm assuming that this, what is this one here? This is the... You also have the management letter to approve for distribution. Yeah, we have both of these, right? I, yeah, Fergus. I, I would comment on the representation letter, if I may. You may. So, um, oh. uh, the Melanson firm is asking the commissioners to make the county to make representations to Melanson and there's some uh, 49 representations and then some other verbiage here. Uh, this is dated as of December 30th, 2020 and relates to the, the 2019 audit. Um, I, I don't know that I'm in a position to make these representations at this point. So, I, there's an awful lot in here. And it's dated as of December 30th when I wasn't a commissioner. Right, I think. So, I note that the draft letter has the, sig the signature line for the former chair. Former chair, yeah. yeah. And I don't know why these have been so late in coming. Now, um, I would pose a question to, to Fergus. Are you comfortable with all these representations? Are these all accurate? I mean, I've read their draft uh, management letter, their draft materials. Um, you know, they found no material issues in their review. Um, I mean, I guess it's up to you whether you want to uh, move the process forward or or redo the process. I, I don't know. I inherited this as well. Um, Madam Chair, may I? Yes. I'd like to inquire about a couple of specific ones that I had starred. First one is number 14. It says all funds and activities are properly classified. If we haven't reconciled the books, how do we know if everything's properly classified? Uh, again, I repeat that the, 
The monthly bank reconciliations were complete by 2019. This information was not communicated by every member of my office to every other member of my office, but we we have that assurance. Um, I believe that means like nursing home funds are segregated. Federal grant funds are segregated. We just created an account for the water tower reserve. That was done. I believe that is what that line is referring to. Number one is we have fulfilled our responsibilities as set out by the audit engagement terms of the letter. Have we complied with our end of the bargain on the audit contract on the audit contract? So I did pull up their contract because it came up earlier and right. reviewed it. Um, it does not specify, by the way, whether it simply says results will be communicated. It does not say how those results will be communicated. Um, I believe the answer is yes because they completed the audit, right? If they, we there were definitely stumbles along the way that preceded almost all of us, um, but we did get the process unstuck and moving forward. So. They would not have completed the audit if we if they were waiting on information from if us. If the audit is complete, why am I signing this? I believe this is for their perspective, right. this not shields for them ours. from liability and puts it back on us. To wit, I have no confidence in our finances. So if I may, um, essentially, the representations, you know, some 50-odd representations, uh, you know, in, in a sense, their their audit opinions are partially based on these representations. They're relying on the county's representations uh, in, in providing their their, their opinions. Their, their management. So, um, I I think it's critical we have. A presentation and, and have a discussion with them. And you know, I I can't make these representations because I don't know. No. Nope. I, I don't have enough personal information to make these representations. So you know, there's a line for your signature on this. And I don't think you've answered my question, which is, are all of these representations accurate? Are you able to make all of these representations? I have no reason to think that any of the information that they received as part of this audit had, um, it is of concern. I, I, I can't prove a negative, Commissioner. Okay. Um, and at some point, we either have to trust the process or not trust the process. The process is only good as the information inputted into it. If there are documents that weren't provided to Melanson, then the audit is worthless, and that's what they're saying. They're saying, representa make a representation that you've provided everything. Make a representation that these 40-odd things are accurate to the best of your knowledge, and you're going to sign on that line. You're comfortable with that, is attorney, I, I believe is Commissioner Platch's question. To the best of my knowledge, yes. This, this is a standard letter. This is a standard form. This is not specific. And if we were a county. standard county whose books were in order, I'd happily sign it. We're not. There's nothing standard about this process. It's late. It's had. There's been inaccuracies. We haven't reconciled the accounts. I, this isn't. I agree with you. It's standard. And if we were in a standard position, I think I would feel a lot more comfortable signing it. I don't believe we're in a standard position. So, and if I may, yeah. and if you had read the, the, the draft, where they're saying, they're pretty much saying that they got what they needed from this, did this. If you read what they're... Yeah, but they, they reference we have we have requested certain re written representations from management, which are included in their letter. Right. Uh, oh. Do we? So, do we have a process of due diligence, internal due diligence, to validate all of these 
the representation. And I, and first, I know you came on board just you know, three months ago. This is not of your creating. You know the, the issues we're dealing with. Um, Your recommendation is to sign this and to get this over and done with so we can start 20s? Yes, that is. And you have confidence in this? To the best of my knowledge, oh. yes. What about, well, actually, maybe we should be talking to Kathy because she's the one that started the process and would have given them most of the information before you were here, correct? Yes, 100%. So do you think we should ask Kathy to come up and ask her these questions? What would you... I think that, I understand, especially with the new commissioners who are stepping into this, you don't want to take responsibility for something that you have nothing to do with. I totally get that. I feel very similarly. Um, but I believe that what we really need to do is put this to bed, move forward. If there are issues, we're going to discover them with our 2020 audit, which I'm personally going to be responsible for driving. And that, to me, is much more important than um, revisiting where we were 12 to 24 months ago. We're still in media questions, so may I have a follow-up since we're still on that agenda item? Yes. For the new commissioners, this is why I would say it might be uh, a good idea to have a Lance and come. And if if the discussion goes into areas that need to go into non-public, then you should do that. Yes. For the new for the new members, so you feel confident in signing it. Thank you. Uh you're saying you've seen some kind of preliminary audit? The, the draft documents, which you should have all received a couple of weeks, several weeks ago, yes. And did what steps did you take to, re, to review that? I read through it. The treasurer read through it. Um, We have our numbers, they've looked at the numbers, and they found nothing material in it. So Do our numbers match the audit? See, I only have half the information. I only have the audit. I have no idea what our numbers are. They gave us, I think, six closing entries. If I, believe, I believe it was six closing entries, which is pretty standard. Um, I mean, I, uh, again... Did they match what we had? And can you be more specific? So the the numbers that they gave us in the draft audit, did that match our bookkeeping? There were no material discrepancies between the two. And they do things like they restate our financial position as auditors and accountants do. Um, but there was, there was nothing, there were no flags to suggest that there was uh, any cause for concern. It was a routine audit from their perspective in terms of what was observed. Joe, do you have any input? Alvin? He had his hand up earlier. He's oh, muted. He's muted. You're muted, Joe. There we are. Sorry. I had my hand up on a previous issue, um, and that was that uh, Assistant Treasurer Pam Berlin will be signing checks this morning. So um, I'm not sure where she is with that, but uh, just so you'll know, the checks are being signed, and then the commissioners can sign them thereafter. So on this audit issue, um, if the commissioners feel there's a concern or something that may not be clear enough for them, and I realize new commissioners coming in, 
um, probably not able to, to get the full picture. Then I would recommend that the commissioners draft a letter to the auditor and invite the auditor to come to a commissioner's meeting and explain everything that's in there. Um, I do feel reasonably confident that the auditor has done their job, their due diligence, to check and make sure that there's no material uh, weaknesses. I do question that a little bit because things like not having a checkbook balance to me is a material weakness. So um, in the overall process, it would seem to me that the best thing to do is to, like I said, invite the auditor and the commissioners to have a discussion and then sign that paperwork and we'll be done with that auditing firm. And moving forward with a new auditing firm, hopefully things are going to be done a lot uh, sooner, quicker, and easier. I know that doesn't perhaps give you any additional conf uh, confidence, but um, I do feel that the auditor did do their due diligence. Remember, the auditor doesn't look at every piece of paper. They only select certain items to look at. Yes. May. So uh, I look at these representations. These are pretty straightforward. Right. There, there's not a lot of controversial stuff in here. Uh, the, the issue with the audit, as I see, is it's taken too long to get done. It, I don't have a, any reason to believe that it's not accurate, that there's a problem there. I would like the firm to come in mm -hmm. and do a presentation. I, but I, I see they have statements in here that say uh, they had no problems working with management. They had no problems working and getting the information they needed. Uh, so there shouldn't be, I, I don't see any issues that, that you know, except for the first the first thing they say um, you know, with regard to timing of the audit, we were unable to conduct, conduct our audit consistent with the plan right. timing uh, due to the county's numerous delays. Right. And yet they had no problems working with management and getting the information. So uh, I, I, I think I'd like some more information on, on that in particular so we can make sure whatever the issue was, it won't be repeated going well, forward. I, I think so. that you'll have pretty much those answers if you go down to their it things on the controls. controls. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it does say that they weren't able to get things in a timely fashion. And it was because of the county's year-end closing. Right. right. Which is due to the non-reconciliation. What, uh, yeah. what was the date of the year-end closing? <laughs> um, you know, it's pretty clear that this relationship had problems over the last year, right? The county lost its administrator, COVID hit, all sorts of things. Maybe these are excuses, they're also facts. Um, so material didn't get to them in a timely manner. Um, there was the question about when were the books closed. Um, you know, I've told you that for this year we're looking for a soft close of the books in February and move the process along. Um, this is a bit of a chicken and egg issue. They won't finalize the audit without receiving the, this letter. So they won't schedule, they won't have material that they can present to you without having this. They're owed a significant amount of money, which gives me reason to believe that they have an interest in putting this to bed as well. Um, so, you know, who was responsible for the delay? My observation is that there's plenty of blame to go around. Um, but we're all resolved to make sure that doesn't happen moving forward, and we've changed audit firms and all sorts of stuff. So, Is there an official date that the, books, that the year was closed? They just gave us closing entries, you know, in late December, I entered them, and that closes the books for 2019. So we're under the statute, we're not in, we're not in violation of the statute, because we have a certain period of time after the, after the books close, it's, it's 
120 days after the books closed? Yes. To complete the audit. So if the books weren't closed until December. December, you know, we're well within the statute. Uh, now, obviously, there were delays in getting the books closed, but right now we don't have to point blame in terms of. I think I need to understand more about the representations before I'm, a comf I'm comf comfortable approving it. It is dated December 30th, though, before I was a commissioner. But it was, and you before, but it only needs the chair's signature and the CFO. So you, I mean, you'd have to vote to allow me to sign, or that you approve, but you don't have to put your name on it. I, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so it's not your will. Like he says, they're not going to agree to come here and they're not going to do anything until this is signed. So, I mean, we're at a, a standstill. What about some middle ground where Matt and I's concerns are, are eased by a signed oath from the CFO that this is accurate to the best of his abilities and based on the pains and penalties of perjury? Uh, if we all feel, if we're operating under the assumption we feel comfortable in this room. So I, I don't think we need that. I just... If, if, if the due diligence has been done to validate these representations, and I don't have any historical information to know that that's happened, uh, and I would... But I don't think you're going to get it from the auditors, Matt. So we're just going to hold up this audit. No, going... this is internal. This is internal. These are representations that the county is making. Right. So how are we not get based that? on anything the auditors have done? And the auditors are relying on these representations to provide their opinion. I understand that, but how are we going so, to get that internal? I mean, none of the suggestions have been good. Nobody likes me asking the business office to make a representation in addition to the letter that it that they are accurate. Uh, chairwoman suggested we bring Kathy up since she provided the information. That wasn't liked. Uh, several people from public comment said bring the auditors in. You and I have determined it's not an auditor issue, it's an internal county issue. So. While I agree with you, I'm not sure where that leaves us in a direction form. I'm just going through these and seeing if any uh, are problematic. I, I, I don't have a problem making a motion. Uh, to allow uh, the chairman to sign this. Well, I don't. I don't see us making any progress if we don't. I mean, I know we all have questions, and I think we all pretty much know what the answers are to those questions. No. Or, I mean. So I, my problem is I don't know what was done in terms of giving information to the audit firm. That's my concern. And. But that was done by the previous commission. Right, but if we sign this, aren't we saying we're adopting, we are the commission? Madam Chair, the Treasurer has his hand up. Yes, Joe. Thank you, Madam Chair. It occurs to me that uh, the current commissioners, being the new commissioners, um, are very concerned about signing that document without some sort of um, additional background information. So I would propose 
that if the commissioners vote to allow the chairwoman to sign it, I'd be happy to sign it as the treasurer also. Uh, we have done things like this in the past when the uh, commissioners um, may not be able to come to a final decision or if there's some other issue that causes the problem. But in order to move this thing forward, um, I would be happy to sign that document with the treasurer, excuse me, with the um, uh, commissioner chair. I'd be comfortable with that. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how to how to articulate a motion. Can we do it like we did with the first document that needed to be dis signed? If you and I absent from from voting due to the fact that we have no personal knowledge because we weren't here, then the chairwoman and the treasurer can quorum as two. No, you can't. It's not a majority. That's not a majority. Joe okay. can't, if we're precluded from voting. And there's not. <laughs> it's not that well, we're voting have, no. It's, you're yeah. just voting on me signing. That doesn't. If I may, Madam Chair? Yes, Joe. I, I think the initial vote would have to be something along the lines of allowing the treasurer to sign that document. Um, and if you have a majority for that, then I think you may be covered, however I'm not an expert. So. But isn't this just semantics, yeah. Commissioner Platt, if we vote to allow the treasurer and the chair to sign? Then the votes on the record, we may have to sign. Well, as of December. Um. Well, Fergus, could we get? We're going to need an updated one anyway because it has Amanda's name on it. Can we get a an updated version? Version? Uh. No, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's appropriate to just cross out the name and, and just cross it out. Okay. It. Um, and sign so that. Too. Yeah, I would think so too. Okay. So it's up to you guys. Once this is signed, uh, and I can call them, Fergus can call them, and, and say we really need you to come in here, and mm -hmm. you know, uh, 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 probably better than Fergus saying, you know, we're not going to finish. Um, we do have money that is in holding the rest of your whatever, and um, I'm sure. They've always come in. We've always had joint meetings at the end. So. Well, and I think you can say the contract, well, it's the four corners of the contract. Right. It says will be communicated in our procedural history. And Past this, precedent has been that they physically do that. Yeah. I don't foresee that that should be too much of a problem if we give them enough notice. As soon as you get a, another date, when the commission is meeting, we can send it to them right away. And certainly they can attend on Zoom. And certainly, yeah, that's true. They, they would attend on Zoom. Yep. make the motion uh, that the commissioners allow me to sign the um, the representation letter from Melanson and Heath and also that they are giving their permission for the um, treasurer to sign also. Is that okay, Melissa, and that? Yeah. If they if they wish to have the yeah. treasurer sign. The December thirtieth letter. The December thirtieth letter. 
if we can get that in there. I would second that motion. Any more discussion? <coughs> no, thank you. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Can I now have a copy of it? You yes. certainly can. Sorry. Madam Chair, just for clarification, were there any opposed to that motion? No, it's an aye. Thank you. Thank you. You could have upstairs if you wanted to. Thank you. Okay. So I will. Here. Can I get my copy? Oh, well, Fergus has got to sign this too, so. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Did you want to put it on county letterhead? Yes, no, no. He just wants it signed. <laughs> Here you go, Fergus. I'll just pass this over to you. Thank you. And um, I'll make sure that you get a copy of that. And we'll run one off downstairs. Okay, any more public input? I think that's what we were on. You were on media questions. Media questions. Oh. Yes. If I might, Madam Chair, I believe you also had the uh, management order on your this list one? of things to approve for distribution if you. Oh, this has got to be signed also? No, I think no, we just needed to approve it for distribution to the numerous eight. A requesting. Okay. All right. I'll wait a motion for that. To, to do what? Distribute okay. this. People asked for this in our last meeting, and mm -hmm. you and I asked for time to review it before it went out. That's the management order, yeah. No, it's. Yeah. I'm good with letting it go out. Okay. So. Thank you. So is that a motion? Yeah, I would make a motion to allow this. Okay. I would second. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Point of information. Yes. Is that the management letter from Lansing or the uh, for all child or assessments? From Lansing. 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 Yeah. So it's the initial letter. It's a draft. And then our yeah. follow-up letter. We'll make sure you get a copy of this too. Then. Hopefully we will not have these problems next year with a new audit company and um, a better organized uh, finance department. And yes. Um, Madam Chair, I did have one other thing. Um, if I could have the commissioners okay to distribute the Report submitted by Bob Murray, um, the Siemens oh. rundown, you know, just uh, yeah. progress. Um, he would like to have that sent to the delegation prior to their meeting on Monday when his budget is being presented. So if you saw no issues with it, I'd like to send that in their packet today as well. Okay. I have no problem with that. Um, I'd make a motion that we release that okay. Siemens, Siemens project, project overview to the public and or the delegation. The amendment. Um, Melissa, would you reread the amendment? The motion. Okay, so the motion was to release the um, Siemens project overview to the delegation and to the public for review. Yes. Okay. Second. Okay. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. I know this is really good, isn't it? Okay, you did a nice job, and he yes. would also like to incorporate that into the annual report. You know, yes. maybe work, change the wording a bit, but yeah. it's very nice. Yeah. Very Perfect. detailed. Thank you. Okay. Do we have anything else? Any more media questions or public input now? Ed? We don't have the rest of the afternoon, so I, I'll keep my mouth shut. <laughs> no, we don't have the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> we like to hear from you, Ed. I'm not sure. 
want to hear from him today, Tara. You don't want to hear from him today. Okay. No thanks, man. Okay, then, um, wow. We are going to, uh, I guess we will recess then to sign checks. Pepper. Right, but we, we only have the one at, oh my God. Yeah. yeah. I thought we didn't have any. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. um, I have asked. Um, Is there a short one I have that asked we could for, take up before? Yep, I have a, like a five minute one. And Great, then, let's um, start there. Administrator Chan was on the line for one and Superintendent Beth and I, I've asked to okay. keep it free. Okay. Um, so tell me. Yeah, you have to be the same. Yep. If, if you would like to combine, so we have yep. three in A, one in yeah, B, and one in C. Okay. Oh, good lord. Okay. So. Here's a copy of the Melanson contract. Just you ask for it. Oh, good. Um, it's um, blah, blah, blah. So I will make a okay. motion to go. All right. I'll wait a motion to go into non-public. I make I'll a I'll motion second. to go into non-public uh, based on the RSA, specifically RSA 91-A semicolon 3 under sections A, B, and C. I'm going to have to take a roll call vote. Right. Yep. Roll call vote. I'm going to do a second. I'm sorry. Matthew, second. Yep. second. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Tassari. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Commissioner McCarthy. Aye. Commissioner Platt. Aye. Okay. 